Hi church family, my name is Lisa Lightbody and I have been a part of Harper Church since 2003 along with my husband Brian and our son Adam who is now married to Jenna. Um, I currently am a youth leader for middle school girls which keeps me really busy. I'm also a greeter and a hugger because I think those go together, greeter hugger. And the only problem with that now is that COVID-19 makes hugging impossible. So I am really not liking that part at all. Um, I've really enjoyed listening to all of the devotions that people have done. I've enjoyed learning more about people I don't really know and hearing their stories. Um, and God has been nudging me to do this. I try to ignore the nudging because I did not want to do this, but God kept nudging. And so I decided that he must really want me to, to say this. So anyway, here I am. Um, speaking is not an issue for me because I'm a big time extrovert, but there's something really raw and personal about sharing your own story. And I was not sure I was ready for that. And it's kind of scary for me. But anyway, here we go. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about me first, and then I'm gonna share my favorite verse and I will tell you why it has been my life verse forever and how important I think a verse it is at this time in our world. So first of all, um, I was born in Fort Dix, New Jersey at the Army base, um, moved to Ohio, go Buckeyes, and then ended up out here in Seattle. Um, many years ago, I'm not gonna say it because you'll know how old I am. Um, I grew up in an Episcopal church, but I never really felt any connection to Jesus or a relationship with him. Um, there was Young Life when I was in high school, but Young Life, as far as I was concerned, was just full of kids that were goody two-shoes and didn't want to get in trouble, and I definitely wanted to get in trouble, and so Young Life was not going to be for me at all. Um, I grew up in a family with a lot of love and a lot of laughter and a lot of teasing. Um, but my relationship with my dad was challenging growing up because I never felt good enough in his eyes. And later in life, I learned that after I was saved that God thought I was good enough to die for, which was awesome. Um, I did have a really strong Christian presence in my grandma. She had this sign in her kitchen, and it'll make more sense in a little while, but she had this sign in her kitchen that said, God said, a, excuse me, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And she lived by that. She prayed every day for my grandpa's salvation for 50 years. And when he was 80, he got saved and baptized in the river at age 80. Coolest story ever. So um, I finally got saved. God saved me on Mother's Day, 1994. Um, I stopped running from him and I stopped running from all the things that I had filled my life and my heart with to try to take the place of God's immense love for me. Um, I was a broken person. I'm still a broken person. I'm just a broken person who knows where I'm gonna go when I die, who knows who my savior is, and who is grateful beyond belief for the love that he has for somebody who is so undeserving. So, <clears throat> I really wanna share this verse. Um, it's Deuteronomy 31.8 and it says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This verse is some, sometimes a verse that I say a hundred times a day. It's a lifeline, but really what it feels like is a big God hug. Like God just wrapped his arms around me and reminds me that he's not going anywhere and that I am worth everything to him. And I really think at this 
with COVID and pandemics and all that stuff, this verse is even more um, relevant today. And the way that I study this verse is to kind of take it in parts. So the first part, um, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. The cool part about that is the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. It doesn't say David goes before you and will be with you or Mary or a shepherd. It says the Lord himself goes before you. The sovereign, almighty, great I am goes before you and will be with you. How cool is that? That the Lord himself, Jesus, who died on the cross, goes before you and will be with you. He goes before us because he's been through a lot of the things that we have been through. He's been through temptation. He's been through ridicule and persecution. He's been through all of that. And yet he goes before us and he will be with you. It doesn't say he'll be with us when things are great. It doesn't say that he'll be with us when things are bad. It says he will be with you. That means for all of it. That means for um, issues that you're having with uh, family members. It could be things that are happening to you at your job. It could be things to do with the pandemic. But it says he goes, he goes before you and will be with you. It's like God just is holding your hand and he's not going to let go. And that is such a comfort to me and I hope it is to you. The next line, he will not leave you nor forsake you. So he will not leave you even when you've left him. He won't leave you when you've decided that you can handle life on your own. Hello, that is totally me a lot of times. He will not leave you when you are full of despair. He will not leave you when you don't know what to do about your current situation. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Those are tough ones right now. I know that there are a lot of people that are afraid and discouraged in the middle of a pandemic. Those that have lost their jobs and those that have lost family members to this, to this COVID. But we all know, do not be afraid. I mean, that's not the, it's not the only time that is said in the Bible. But do not be afraid. It means that God is bigger than our fear. Remember, the Lord himself, the sovereign, almighty, risen Savior. Do not be afraid. He is bigger than our issues at work. He is bigger than our fear about a medical test. He is bigger than our fear about the future, about our finances. That's the way I look at it. And then do not be discouraged. That's a tough one too. But I think we just need to remember the first part of the verse, the Lord himself goes before you. How lucky are we that the great big God that rules the universe is telling us not to be discouraged because he's there. He's there for all of it. He's there for everything we go through. And I know that there are plenty of times in my life where I have tried to handle everything on my own because I thought at the time that I was obviously better equipped. We all know it doesn't work that way. And that's why this verse, when I say it over and over and over again, just reminds me that God is so good to us and God is never going anywhere. He promises that. It's just like the sign in my grandma's kitchen. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And I choose to claim this verse, and I choose to believe every single word. 
But I will tell you that there are there were two instances that I wanted to share today, um, kind of personal things that really tested this verse for me and really made me wonder how much I actually believe this. And am I just repeating the verse or do I believe it? Do I claim it? Do I hold it in my heart? Um, the first was um, when Adam was a year old, I had a head injury. I fractured my skull and due to that situation, we were not able to have any more children, although we got the best one there is. Um, and I also ended up having headaches every day um, since then. There's been lots of, of um, doctor's visits and lots of treatments and lots of everything. But the truth is I still have these headaches all the time. And I remember the doctor saying to me, and I was a new Christian. I was um, saved when Adam was a year old on Mother's Day. And this happened three months later. So you, there was a lot. I'm a baby Christian. I don't know what's happening. And I just had this head injury. And the doctor saying to me, you should feel better within six months. Well, six months came and went, and I didn't feel any better. You should feel better in another year because the average um, healing from my type of head injury was supposedly six months to two years. Well, two years came and went, and there was not a lot of relief, and we tried everything. And this verse, there were some times when I couldn't even say this verse because I didn't believe it. Why, God, would you give me these headaches? Why would you do that? And I think what has happened since I've had these for so many years is God used that to help me encourage other people who are having trials and other people. I love to pray for people. I am a prayer warrior. I love to do that. But I think that that was something that God gave me, a glimpse of himself in the midst of something that I didn't understand. I tell my youth group girls this all the time. Say this after me. I will trust you even when I don't know your plan. And this verse goes right back to that. Because God goes before me and he will be with me. So I don't need to be afraid. The other was when um, many of you know that Adam has had knee pain, severe knee pain for 10 years. I spent most of that 10 years on my knees begging God to take that pain away. Please let me have the pain. Please let him not have this awful knee pain anymore. And that verse really sustained me. It helped me to remember that God knows all about pain. God knows about pain that we will never be able to understand or, or conceive. He knows that. So again, um, Good story. Adam ended up having a device implanted in his spine and he no longer has any knee pain. And we are grateful to our almighty God. But that took 10 years. And again, kind of like when I said earlier about my grandma, she prayed for my grandpa's salvation for 50 years. Timing, timing, timing. But this verse again goes right back to that. I hope that this verse... I hope you'll read this and I hope you'll look at it and I hope you'll share it with somebody. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I hope that this verse will become one of your favorites too and that it's one that you will memorize and hold in your heart and say a hundred times a day if you need to. Anyway, thanks for letting me share my story, and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that your word is alive, and that it is a word that we can put in our heart, where we can hang on to it during times of trouble and times of strife. I'm grateful, Lord, that you gave me this verse, and that it is something that I've been able to share with other people, but I really, really hope, Lord, that you get the honor and the glory for everything that I have said today. So grateful to be your child. So grateful that you love broken people. In your mighty name, amen.
Thanks, church. Have a great day.